Today, I present to you a video from a very challenging campaign with Burgundy, not Brandenburg. My goal will be to, within 50 years, because that's usually how long this duke lives, acquire these territories for Burgundy for free. As a bonus, you'll also learn how to unlock this achievement. It will involve making a very difficult choice, in which I'll have to decide the fate of this young Burgundian princess. The initial situation for Burgundy is not easy, because this country is surrounded by three very powerful enemies, and essentially, I'll have to wage wars with each of them. However, Burgundy's greatest enemy is the to the throne. I won't be able to get rid of him, as I'll need him to live as long as possible. Fortunately, Burgundy's very strong form of government comes to my aid, thanks to which I'll be able to form many alliances that will help me in these wars. Burgundy can also create a certain country, which currently isn't on the list, but I'll show you how to unlock it. However, before that, if everything goes according to plan, Burgundy will transform into this country and then this country to ultimately become this hidden nation. Interested? Iron Man must immediately prepare Burgundy for two upcoming wars. One with France, which will potentially be the tougher war, and one with the Duchy of Provence, where I'm counting on a certain opportunity. At the same time, I also need to think about the future and the second stage of my plan. That's why I started with alliances, with Castile. Because Castile has France as a rival and will most likely help us in the war against the French, with the Kingdom of Aragon. I have to admit, I'm lucky here, Aragon has France and England as rivals and isn't allied with Spain. Which, okay, I have to say, doesn't happen often. My third alliance is with Bohemia, because Bohemia is an enemy of Austria, and my fourth alliance is with the Papacy. This is to complete a mission. I didn't worry about having too many relations, because I solved that issue by giving the appropriate privileges, especially strong duchess to the nobility. For the other estates, I took the following privileges. I also completed a mission to get a cheaper military advisor thanks to a manpower trick. I didn't take privileges for additional monarchy points, because I wanted to complete this mission as quickly as possible. I hired a cheaper Burgundian administrative advisor. I immediately upgraded him to level 2. As for the diplomatic advisor, I'll need a spy master the most here. And I took my cheaper military advisor from the mission, I also upgraded him to level 2. The rich can do it all, I didn't change my court's focus yet, because I plan to do that only after the death of my epic duke. I plan to focus on diplomatic actions later, just in case. I also immediately completed my mission to subdue my vassals. This gave me territorial claim in the Lorraine region, which I really care about, and to be honest, I'm counting on a lot of luck at this point. Within the next few months, the Pope should excommunicate the Duke of Provence, or the Duke of Savoy, most often one of them. From what I can see, it seems the Duke of Provence has upset the Pope more. I hadn't declared rivals yet because I remembered that those countries often form alliances between themselves then, and unfortunately, Austria and France are getting along very well in this game. I sent a spy to France to build a spy network. The second diploma was focused on securing royal marriages with every country where I already had an alliance. I wasn't expecting this excommunication. And it's the worst kind because it's of no use to me at all. So unfortunately, a normal war with Provence awaits me. My ruler won't be a general because when the king leads, you know, there's too high a chance he'll get hit by a stray arrow. So I settled for a less capable commander. The war with Provence is ongoing and the kingdom in Naples has gained its independence. A bit too soon, to be honest. So to speed up the war with Provence, I moved my troops onto its territory in Lorraine. Meanwhile, my vassals moved to conquer their allies. Fortunately for me, France is also at war over the province of Maine. This means, first of all, they won't form any additional alliances and the Republic of Genoa isn't a heavy opponent. And secondly, a second excommunication goes to Savoy. <coughs> So, I'm doubly unlucky. Provence becomes my vassal as a result of this war, which generates a lot of aggressive expansion points for me. And I'll tell you soon how I'm going to deal with that. Conquering Provence didn't give me any power projection points either. I forgot to set rivals. I overcomplicated things. Now I have to insult England. A big insult to England, in fact. And to France as well, honestly, all of this to complete the mission for the English alliance. This is quite a peculiar way of conducting foreign policy. Oh well. I waited to complete this mission until this moment because I wanted to get this modifier. It speeds up the reduction of aggressive expansion. It's currently dropping at a rate of 3 points per year. So, now, I'm changing my diplomatic advisor. I'm also changing my country's trade policy in the given trade region. And I'll also focus on increasing my prestige. After conquering Provence, my next step will be to raise its development level to 100 points to be able to complete this Provencal mission for King René's claim, which essentially gives me control of the entire Naples region for free. It's best to raise this development level by taking provinces from France, although I had to think it over here because I was tempted to use the excommunication of the French ruler. I could take those four provinces for 50% of the aggressive expansion cost and then transfer some of them to Provence, or I could do something else take that province from my vassal Nevers, which would upset them immensely, but it would allow me to release Champagne. The Duchy of Champagne, meanwhile, has claims to four French territories, and reclaiming provinces for your vassals only costs 25% of the aggressive expansion. 
and all together there will be six such provinces. So I think I know which path I'll take. I'll just wait for my diplomats to convince Castile and Aragon to support me in this war. In the meantime, the French troops are bravely bleeding out in their war with England. Why are so many of their troops just standing there? Before the war, let's hold a knightly tournament, which will positively affect my army's morale. I'm also developing the fourth military technology. In December, I managed to complete the mission, as well as grant additional privileges for more points. And basically, with everything in place, I declare war on France with the help of my allies, though I won't need them much here. But since I can make this war easier, why not take advantage of that? I'm focusing on breaking up smaller French armies, and to make this easier, I'll slow down the game speed because I'm losing track of where these armies are running. From what I can see, the French forces are attacking the south of my vassal, Provence. Which is great because Spain and the Kingdom of Aragon will soon arrive here. And look at how the French forces are getting thrashed by Castilians and Aragonese in southern France. Meanwhile, I'm securing the occupation of provinces in the north with my army. I also called on the Pope for this war, hoping the excommunication lasts until the end. I'm still building a spy network in France because it speeds up the siege of forts. And it also reduces the aggressive expansion this country receives, but nobody cares about that, I guess. To my misfortune, England has already ended its war with France. And unfortunately, England lost that war. I'm using my technological advantage to crush French forces wherever I can. Though France is now visiting Rome. And that's fine, because Aragonese forces have broken through the southern forts. I, meanwhile, have taken the northern forts, including Paris, of course. But the price for these victories will probably be paid by the Pepasi. It took me 404 days to siege this level 1 fort. Just incredible. Right after that, I move on to Genoa, and the French forces are marching on Paris. Unfortunately, I've lost my technological advantage as well. So to end this war faster, I'll take only war reparations from the Republic of Genoa, and shortly after, I can make peace with France, in which I'll take four provinces for Champagne and two for Provence. I am indebting France, which might prevent them from purchasing the Pope's forgiveness and the excommunication will stick. The best part of all this is that no one cares about France's defeat. Alright, so now that the first war with France is won and Provence is under my control, I can move on to the next part of my plan, which essentially involves further actions against France and strengthening Provence and paying off all my debts. That's why, no matter what your diplomats were doing, they stop now, and I start improving relations with the French vassals who like me the most. To complete this mission, I need three of these vassals to have a relationship with me above 100 points. In the meantime, Provence completed its mission and got permanent cores on Naples provinces. So, without hesitation, I immediately declare war on Naples. Overall, it's best to hurry before Naples gets strong allies or is conquered by Castile or Aragon. I'll also intentionally fall behind in diplomatic technology and stockpile points, planning to use them later. The worst part of all this is actually reaching Naples, because you see, I don't really have a fleet, so I need to go by land, which means I need to secure a lot of military access. Who would have guessed? And once I secure the access, my vassals will march into the war, or onto the war. They will definitely go against those Naples troops, right? Yes, right, they went after those troops. And once my vessels arrive here, I can revoke all those military access rights. After all, I don't want to keep paying extra for these diplomatic relations. Since I don't want anything from Siena at the moment, I make peace with them to get as much money and prestige as possible. Prestige is a modifier that brings a lot of nice other bonuses. Mostly though, I care about reducing aggressive expansion and speeding up the decay of any expansion I've already gained. After breaking through the forts in Naples, I defeat their last army and begin carpet sieging. For the first government reform, since we're still in the first era, I choose additional taxes. That also weakened the nobility. I, of course, hand over control of the occupied territories to Provence, and I can conquer all of Naples in this war for just 16 points of aggressive expansion. Even better, I can reduce that even further. Because some time ago, I adopted the fifth administrative technology, which allows me to choose the first ideas for my country. Not those. I wonder if you know why I had those selected here. The ideas I pick for this country are probably ones no one has recommended yet. Spy ideas. A very good alternative is influence ideas, as they help maintain the loyalty of your vassals. But that doesn't interest me. I want to conquer a lot, and I'll worry about vassal loyalty later. I immediately develop spy ideas to the second level. So now I only gain 12 points of aggressive expansion. Excellent. And give me the money as well. Speaking of vassal loyalty, I think I might actually have a bit of a problem with that. However, I'm not going to to spend prestige to increase loyalty. Instead, I'll develop my vassal's provinces. And I am integrating this one vassal since he only has one province and is taking up space. After improving relations, I finally had to bribe the French vassals, which secured their support. And France lost their trust. And look, thanks to this, each of the French vassals gains 50% liberty desire. Provence has expanded, French vassals are no longer loyal to France. So now it's time to move on to the next actions, which could include accepting these vassals from France. However, 
First, I need to bring down the Holy Roman Empire and capture Paris because I forgot to do that in the previous war. The easiest way to collapse the empire is simply to form alliances with all the electors and somehow get into a war with Austria. Unfortunately for me, none of the electors had an alliance with the emperor, because then I could have just ignored such an elector. Nice. A pleasant surprise. I had to turn Provence into my march to make it more loyal and unfortunately use up some prestige. Unfortunately, my diplomatic efforts at this point were very costly because I had to make a lot of alliances. The elector of Brandenburg put up strong resistance, but luckily I managed to secure their support after a while. I immediately declared war on Austria and I called the Czechs for help. It's also a good time to review all the electors and make sure they are either your ally or currently at war with you. If not, you know what to do. I combined my entire army into one and sent it straight to Austria's capital, Vienna. On the way, I might help the Czechs too. Just in case, I also took out cheaper loans because the war with the emperor might drag on. And besides, I'm implementing institutions. Thanks to that, I have the fifth level of military technology and better units. Without morale, I immediately attacked my enemy's army, which I completely destroyed. What's the point of morale in this game now? But seriously, don't try this at home. Then I advanced on the Austrian troops near Vienna. This wasn't as easy. I also managed to develop my capital to level 30 and have many nations under a personal union, so all that remained was to humiliate Austria in this war. This would give me a large boost in splendor points, allowing me to take the casus belli for my wars and make maybe even start a golden era. The war with Austria isn't necessarily difficult, but it's annoying because there are so many capitals to capture. Why doesn't Austria have an alliance with Hungary? Vienna also fell very quickly, which essentially allows me to press the button to dissolve the empire, which I immediately do. This gives me 200 splendor points, increases my power projection by 25 points, but more importantly, it grants me 100 prestige points. The empire no longer exists, and no, you don't need it for a certain event that will happen later in Burgundy, I think. At least I hope so. The empire is definitely not needed to complete this Burgundian mission path. Breaking up the empire was important for me for several reasons. First, conquering the German principalities now generates less aggressive expansion, and Germany itself will begin to consolidate. It's better to have 3 to 4 larger principalities than 50 small ones. Strangely enough, it's easier to conquer them that way. And fortunately for me, I have very little aggressive expansion in the former empire region. After dissolving the empire, I immediately break off all unnecessary alliances, leaving me with two relationships over the limit, because I had to arrange two marriages out of convenience. However, there's a good chance my epic duke will die soon, and then those will end. I had to pull my army back to Champagne to defeat the Austrian army and their allies. Because, unfortunately, while I was capturing fortresses in Austria, they were capturing fortresses in Champagne. And the Austrian army has become somewhat more combative. Oh, they just reached the fourth technology level. When negotiating peace with Austria, I was tempted to make peace based on a show of strength, but I decided to humiliate them and take a large amount of money from the country. Because one of the next steps will be to increase my economy to over 100 gold income. But that's still a long way ahead. Now that the Holy Roman Empire has been completely dismantled, I will now focus on my actions against France. However, I need to wait 5 years for that. In the meantime, I will try to establish a foothold in Italy or Great Britain. Choosing the justification for my wars as an era bonus will certainly help with this. And to be honest, I also need to start catching up on diplomatic technology. Unfortunately, the more I lag behind in it, the harder it is to maintain the loyalty of my vassals. I also need to increase my crown land, because the more I have, the more loyal my vassals are. Though here, I specifically need to have 30% crown land. An opportunity to capture Lorraine came up in the meantime, and my ruler died, may he rest in peace. Unfortunately, the current Duke of Burgundy won't be the best ruler, and since he'll need to live a long time, I'm shifting my focus to diplomatic actions. Either way, I have to hurry from this point on, because I have time to complete my conquests only until the death of this Duke. Then the Burgundian crisis will happen, and you all know what that means. He's 30 years old, so he has about 20 to 30 years ahead of him on average. I will also make some adjustments among my alliances. I'm breaking the alliances with Aragon and Bohemia, I will instead re-establish an alliance with the papacy as well as a new alliance with Poland. And when the time came for the war with France, it turned out that the French king is still excommunicated. So my plan worked, even though, to be honest, I had forgotten about it. I will also use this war to capture a province from Scotland. I also called Castile into the war just in case their ruler dies, because I noticed he is leading the Castilian forces. At least he was here a moment ago. I won't
won't lie, having an extra union over Castile would be nice. Unfortunately, at the start, this war is just Siege Simulator, whoever captures the fort first. Luckily, I got a very good commander for capturing fortresses. I also managed to easily transport my troops to Scotland during this war, and honestly, my goal here is to capture one province. This is to prepare, of course, for a later attack on England. Alright, I'll conquer a bit more from the Scots. Unfortunately, in the meantime, the French ruler died, which unfortunately makes the conquest of French provinces more expensive. So, I slightly changed my plan and took most of the fortresses in France, but I didn't forget about the capital and putting that country in debt. Wow, in the meantime, I became a kingdom. And now, Paris must be my province, unfortunately I can't assign it to anyone else. The remaining provinces, however, I'll give to my vassals. After this war, it's a good time to take all of France's vassals from them. Especially since I noticed that suddenly, one vassal disappeared, and France started integrating the others. To be honest, I was kind of hoping they would conquer each other. I clicked the mission, and the vassals become mine. Yeah! That's going to be troublesome. Luckily, I have many diplomats, so I set them to work with my subjects. Why didn't this appear a little earlier? <coughs> From the moment I took over the French vassals, it's time to act on several fronts simultaneously, or rather, in three directions. And I think an alliance with the Ottoman Empire might prove very useful here. At the third stage of reform, this time a bureaucratic one, I'll go for something I usually don't choose. Normally I'd go for tax development, but I have a lot of vassals at this point, I'd even say too many. I need to find a way into Italy. And I also need a certain culture, that's why I'm starting an invasion of Savoy and I'll make use of Castile in this war. This way, I should be able to deal with Aragon. To be honest, the war with the Italian states turned out to be harder than I expected. Because there are so many targets, my vassals are getting confused, even though I'm assigning them objectives. Marie of Burgundy. No, she hasn't died yet. Why is there a coffin here? From this moment, she becomes the heir to the Burgundian throne. From this moment on, Burgundy gets a hidden modifier. It's not here, nor on this list, that lowers the heir's claim to Charles' throne. It doesn't have to be Maria, really. And now, when our duke dies and the heir to the throne has weak claims, the Burgundian crisis will occur. If our current ruler dies too soon and the heir's claims are strong, then unfortunately the Burgundian crisis won't happen, but I wouldn't worry about that. From Savoy, I take the following peace deal. These provinces, because they have the culture I need, and I release Geneva, as in the future I want Savoy to cease to exist as well. I kept one province for myself to send claims in this region. Next, I also prepare territorial claims on Genoa. I will need that one province from them. Then, I transport my troops to Scotland. And you know what that means? Yes, invasion on the British Isles. I'll take advantage of the fact that England is dealing with some revolts here, which are occupying its capital, allowing me to take over the progress of its sieges. Ah, they've only just started. I could have waited. From England, I take three provinces basically, and a lot of money. That country is truly a great bank in the area. By the way, my heir now has very low claims to the throne. Before the next war with France, I attack the Kingdom of Aragon, as I had many claims there. But at the same time, I also attack France based on my vassal's claims. Poland somehow helped me eagerly in this war. While France quickly fell under my total occupation, unfortunately, with Aragon, I'm stuck on fortresses. From France, I take the following provinces, hoping that Spain will simply take just that one. Unfortunately, this is the moment when I have to be ready for a large coalition. Though I managed to delay it quite a bit, I had some bad luck and still haven't become Pope. Coalition, yeah. From the Kingdom of Aragon, I take one province, an island, and that island called Malta. The loyalty of my vassals is slowly becoming very troublesome. So, I took a peace deal that allows me to give them some land now. I also made a mistake by not using my diplomats to improve relations with both my vassals and my neighbors in the meantime. Then the coalition probably wouldn't have formed. I had a bit of luck. As it turned out, Spain only took one province and even released a few duchies from France which I immediately plan to conquer. Very interesting. Hungary declared war on Austria to establish a union over it. Okay, when did this happen? This is proof that improving relations pays off, as countries are leaving the coalition, which might not end well for them. France is left with only four provinces and I'm not conquering them because I need a weak France. Luckily for me, the coalition is starting to dissolve. That's because I want to conquer countries that profit from trade in the English Channel. And unfortunately for England, it's allied with most of those countries. So I did something like this. I declared the first war and then removed England from the war in exchange for money. Then, I declared a second war and again removed England for money and war reparations. I won't be attacking them for a while. You could say my vassals are doing pretty well in destroying my enemies. So, as a reward, I handed over literally all the post-Germany duchies. At this point, I've completed about 90% of my plan. Because the only provinces I haven't conquered that I needed are in Britain. So now I enter a somewhat boring phase. I have to wait for my ruler's death and develop technology. I'm also increasing the trust of my allies. This might come in handy soon. And the whole plan goes to...
and it was supposed to be boring. So now I had to ensure that all the provinces I recently conquered were already integrated by my vassals. The moment I've been waiting for a long time has come. And by the way, I inherited the throne of Flanders. How nice. But Maria ascended to the royal throne. And this leads to the Burgundian succession crisis in which we have several choices. We can remain as an independent country and deal with all these vassals. I know it looks colorful and cool. We can fall under a personal union with Spain, no. Or we can fall under a personal union with France, which is weak. And that's exactly why I left them with a few provinces. But France has a terrible queen. And when I fall into the personal union, I inherit all territories. All of them. That means not entirely all the territories, but the territories of those vassals whose capitals were in the region of France. In that region, plus the personal unions. But taking this path just killed that young girl. How do you feel about that? The only downside to the solution I just chose is that I don't have a queen named Maria. And honestly, getting this achievement is still possible. All we need is for any queen to be born later, and we'll name her Maria. The second gigantic advantage, which I didn't tell you about, is that now the coalition against me has ceased to exist. So now I can have a dozen years of peace and prepare my country to form Sardinia Piedmont. That's why I will make this region my state. I'm moving my capital there. By the way, I'm completing all the missions I can, and I'm dealing with all the problems I have, especially the economic ones because I'm in a really big deficit. That's why I needed that money from England. I can't make my new provinces a state yet to start earning properly. I'm also burning the development level of all my Burgundian provinces. Thanks to that, I can make the Piedmontese culture my primary one. Unfortunately, because of this, I lost my form of government, but I'll return to it anyway. But first, I'll form Sardinia Piedmont. And for that, I need to be independent and have level 10 administrative technology. In theory, France just inherited all my territories. No way! What are the chances of this happening? I wanted to sit under France for 20 years now, but since I'm a player, now it's a war for independence. At least I've got a really good ruler, Philippe IV, on the throne now. But unfortunately, my plan against the coalition just blew up, and now I have to act very quickly. What's worse is that I still need four provinces. The war with France was really swift, I regained my freedom and conquered France. Now that I've regained independence, I must move on to the next phase of my plan. Survive, prepare for the coalition war, or prevent it. And that could be a problem because the potential coalition is gigantic. So now, as quickly as possible, I'm renewing all my old alliances with the Ottoman Empire. Empire, Poland and Spain. That's why I increased those trust points earlier. I'll also complete those missions while I still can. War. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, I couldn't prevent the coalition war. Maybe it doesn't look bad. Unfortunately, the coalition has slightly larger forces. Though perhaps this war isn't necessarily a bad thing, I'll try to take advantage of it. I must prevent my bankruptcy because I'm still not earning enough. The worst part is that I could have been a powerful state that could easily handle this coalition by now. But I can't, because this is the easiest way to make Burgundian culture dominant in my country again without spending thousands of administrative points later. So I'll be fighting to survive, focusing mainly on destroying my enemies smaller armies, which, for now, is giving me the lead in this war. In fact, the Golden Age could be very useful for me now, and even very much so. I originally planned to take it after forming France. I don't know why the enemy is doing this, but they're just exposing themselves nicely in this war. I'm destroying army after army, battle after battle. I push into my fortresses and destroy everything each time. Even much larger armies, what's going on here? And after dozens of such victorious battles, after less than two years of this war, I can already make a white piece, which I promptly do. It was was actually much easier than I thought. However, after winning this coalition war, I still don't feel safe. That's why I will focus on building trust with my allies, especially with Spain. I need to somehow survive until I can reach the 10th level of administrative technology. Therefore, I am still forced to attack England so that it doesn't join a potential coalition. At least England is reclaiming my former Scottish territories, which are currently occupied by rebels. Exactly, I will still have to survive about 12 more years, but at least for now, I've solved my economic problems and I'm even making a profit, even though most of my country isn't a state. I've also made claims on Britain, as I already have claims on the German duchies. I keep increasing trust. I've also begun to introduce institutions into my country. I acquired colonialism from the Pope. Unfortunately, a Castilian heir has appeared. I was hoping for an union. The year 1509 means I only have half a year of peace left. Raise the army, raise the forts. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again.
I will start my survival phase with a war against Britain and a few German duchies. And look at that, a year after this guy was born, Isabella died. What bad luck. I've conquered four duchies, and honestly, conquering Britain won't worsen my situation. Then I create a vassal from these territories. And honestly, looking at my line of forts, I think I have a small, large marginal line. After introducing the institution, the period I need to survive has shortened by about two years. For now, the coalition still hasn't declared war on me, although it's formed and waiting for me. Yes, nice. I am now also building a large number of manufactories, I need a total of 12. And now, after annexing these German duchies, I can complete this mission to form a mysterious country, whose name you can already see right away. But it's still not the time to click on that mission. In the year 1516, I could click on that technology, but there's no point, because Denmark called me into an unnecessary war. Hope the coalition doesn't appear because of it. Anyway, I have to wait for these farms to be built. Really? Now Poland? Well, actually it's now the Commonwealth, so now we need to crush the Muscovite armies as often as possible. Let Poland win. And I'll probably end this war earlier which will annoy the commonwealth, but I still have high trust with them. So now, when I have level 10 technology, I've built slightly more than 12 manufactories. I'm completing this mission now, but I'm not clicking anything here. Because the first option allows me to create a new country, Lotharingia, and I want to save that for later, I have 3 months to complete this mission. Or I'll get prestige, which is meh. But first, I'm creating Sardinia Piedmont, and I definitely want the new traditions and ambitions, because Sardinia Piedmont has some of the best ideas in this game. And honestly, I'm torn between these ideas and the ideas of Lotharingia. But more importantly, I want to complete Sardinia Piedmont's mission tree, especially this path, though that's not really important. There are also some small perks here. And now I need to increase my income, because this will give me administrative efficiency. The income should be sufficient once I add everything to the states. But first, I switch my culture back to Burgundian. And this will soon allow me to also form France. I'm adding all my provinces to the states, which is super important, and I manually core Paris first, otherwise I won't be able to form France. What surprises me the most is that I have more missions here that reduce my aggressive expansion. I'm changing the level 3 reform, which is a bit of a shame, but I need to earn more. Am I turning my country into an empire? Now we need to wait a month, and I'm barely making less. I'm lowering autonomy wherever I can, and I'm issuing edicts for increased taxes everywhere, which gives me 140 gold in total income. Denmark, you'll wait a bit longer. The coalition is forming again, but I can now complete this mission, 5 points of administrative efficiency. And that mission was my main goal in forming Sardinia Piedmont. Now I'm creating France. You know the French ideas, and you know they're not better than the ones we currently have. But I can complete all my missions here, where again I get reduced aggressive expansion, and I'm really missing just one province to complete this entire path. Oh no! And there was so much reduction of aggressive expansion. One province, I can't believe it. Oh well, the mistake was made. Unless I can keep this open all the time. Wait, unfortunately no. So I'm taking Lotharingian traditions and ambitions anyway. And honestly, you guys decide which ideas are better for conducting further warfare. And honestly, I think Lotharingian ideas are better. The mere creation of Lotharingia, which is an end tag, expands our mission tree. Which unfortunately doesn't compare to the French tree. However, it gives us the possibility to gain another 5% administrative efficiency. And that's one of the most important modifiers for conquest. All the bonuses from the missions I just took remain. Which I would now use continuing to conquer these provinces thanks to these claims. Now with Lotharingia, I will be able to field powerful armies. A pretty good manpower growth, which I would probably double soon. Super powerful national ideas. And most importantly, this country is now making money. Although I'm not earning as much as that commonwealth formed from Lithuania, which in 1550 is already an economic hegemon. I recommend watching that episode. 